Apple breeding at the university goes back to 1878, actually. And we've been doing it here at this site at our Horticultural Research Center since 1908. Probably one of the main differences between our program and other programs is sort of our unique genetic stock. Uh, you know, because we have been in this cold climate uh, for a hundred years or more, and you know, selecting our apples here, our, our genetic stock is, is a little bit different than it is in some of the other apple breeding programs. Well, what we're looking for in the breeding program is really the eating quality. And the two most important factors in eating quality are texture and flavor. And those can only be determined by eating them. The third factor, of course, we're interested in is apparent size and color and those sort of things. And of course, we can do that with the eye. But ultimately, the real test comes in the mouth. In the whole breeding program, we've actually got about 20,000 seedlings probably in the ground at any one time, uh, but they're going in and out all the time as they come into fruiting and as we evaluate them and many of them getting discarded. The, the cross was made originally, trees were growing in the greenhouse. We grafted a small bud onto a rootstock here and grew this one for about six years now. So about seven or eight years after the breeding was actually done, finally we find a winner here. From the time we make that first cross until a consumer gets it is probably 20 to 25 years. There have always been apples available in July, but usually they're very ephemeral in their quality and in their storage life. Potentially a longer season can also help the apple grower. Uh, they can have stock on hand earlier when they, when they want to open their roadside stands or market stands. They can also be shipping to uh, supermarkets earlier then. One aspect of our breeding program that's really risen to prominence in the last three to four years has been the use of uh, DNA markers to help us with our selection. We can now look at uh, prospective parent trees that we might want to use, and we can not only base our decisions about using them as parents on the way they look, but also on their DNA fingerprint, essentially, and what that tells us about their characteristics. The other way that we've been using DNA information is when making selection among seedlings. We can now take uh, DNA from seedlings when they're just very small, a little bit of a leaf, and get the DNA from it. And that can tell us things like what the color of the fruit is gonna be, the, the crispness of the fruit, its storage potential, many years before it's fruiting. I think one of the favorite things that someone has told you about apples is, you made eating apples fun again. <laughs> We've also had growers then who have said, you've made growing apples fun again too and, and profitable for them. So those are the things that probably make it most gratifying. Mm -hmm.